I want to introduce the concept of institutional DeFi. So for me, the, the, let's say the purpose of Cardano is to become this um, institutional DeFi layer one, which is decentralized, secure, and soon scalable. And for us, it's obviously to onboard as much as possible in our lending platform that we called Liquid Pro. So this Liquid Pro version will be working for regulated assets because regulation comes from the type of assets. And there we will add a kind of filtering, a layer of compliance where we need to identify who is accessing to our platform, who can also, based on that, access to which market and also trade to, to which uh, counterparties. And basically, this is our vision for, for Liquid Pro, and we will work on that during uh, the year 2025. What's up, Ada Nation? Welcome to Dapp Central, your home for everything blockchain and crypto. My name is Fareed. As a part of today's video, we're breaking down DeFi, diving into the top app right now in Cardano when it comes to TVL, which is none other than Liquid Finance. As a part of today's interview, I'll be joined by Florian, the co-founder of this protocol. Without any further ado, let me bring him up as we get ready to dive into today's conversation. Florian, it's good to finally have you here on the channel. Welcome up. How are you? Likewise, Farid, it's a pleasure to be here. So yeah, let's start. No, let's jump right on in here. We're going to be diving into Cardano and DeFi. There's been a lot of action, as you're probably well aware, right? Liquid rising to the top. And then most recently, Cardano DeFi TVL hitting a new all-time high. So I think that this is perfectly timed. As we get ready to sort of jump into LQ and what you guys have been building, I think it'd be good to lay the foundation with a little bit of background about who you are and exactly what you contributed to Cardano so far. So maybe I would just say a few words about myself. So I'm Florian Volry, a co-founder of Liquid, uh, based in Switzerland. And four years ago, um, Liquid um, happened, let's say, on Catalyst. So uh, I published an idea, and this is where I met Dwayne, uh, who is also another co-founder of Liquid. And uh, let's say the rest is history. So fast forward, um, four years later, uh, Liquid has now reached almost 150 million uh, assets. Uh, Liquid is a non-custodial lending and borrowing protocol on the Cardano blockchain. So it means that users can either be a suppliers, a provide liquidity, or they can be a borrower. So, and to borrow on Liquid, you need to have uh, obviously a supplied asset first. And the value of these assets is called the collateral. And this value is determined by the risk of the assets. And uh, obviously, different thresholds are, are calculated for, for these assets. And Liquid operates like a kind of money market protocol, where the interest rates are calculated by the offer and the demand. Actually, if you click on the market page on the top, you can access to all of these uh, markets. And also, if you click on details, uh, every user can access to all the details. We also have uh, the utilization. Uh, obviously, there is, uh, for example, for stablecoin, a lot of demand where we have interest rate above 30%, and for uh, other assets, it's much lower. And because of this efficient design, uh, Liquid has attracted so much liquidity on Cardano. And in addition, users can also um, receive staking reward for their ADA, uh, in addition of receiving the ADA uh, supplier uh, API. Nice introduction there, Florian. I do appreciate that. For anybody who's interested in finding out more about Liquid, I'll leave the official links to the platform down below and their official website. Now, that said, there's a couple of things that we're going to be diving into. One of them that's really got me excited is what's basically being branded as Liquid Pro right, or Liquid Finance Pro. And so I'm excited to dive into that. But before we do, right, um, maybe we can break down some of the utility around LQ and how that particular asset fits into the ecosystem. Yes. Um, before speaking about LQ, I also want just to explain uh, the cash flow, uh, because obviously uh, we are a DeFi protocol and it's important to understand how does it work. So Liquid uh, is obviously uh, offering loan. And every time that a borrowers open a loan, some interest are being accrued. And when this uh, an interest or a loan, sorry, is being repaid, for example, someone borrowed 1,000, 
And at some point in time, we have $100 of accrued interest. The person will repay uh, $1,100. And the revenue for the protocol are this accrued interest. And there, 80% is being given back to the suppliers. 10% is uh, keeping by the DAO, liquid DAO, for further growth and, uh, and development. And the last 10% are given to the LQ stakers. So now, what is the utility of the LQ token? So the LQ token has a fixed supply of 21 million. And the utility is, as obviously, you can vote. We have also one of the first DAO uh, with our own on-chain system called Agora, uh, where we, we vote a lot of different uh, things. It can go from, for example, a modification of protocol parameters to, um, I don't know, even the the way we want to allocate this, this revenue. So user can vote, they can also stake. Uh, when you stake, uh, you can vote. It's a condition to vote is to, to stake. And in addition of voting, you receive a 5% API annualize, uh, which is called the staking reward. And you have this percentage of the protocol revenue that we are calling the programmatic rewards. In addition of that, when um, borrowers open a loan, he or she is paying a loan origination fee, which is currently 1% of the borrowed amount. And this revenue is split 50% between the liquid DAO treasury and 50% for the LQ stakers as part of the programmatic rewards. So you do a really good job of breaking down and explaining a lot of that here. I do want to take a brief opportunity for anybody who wants to jump into governance for Liquid to go ahead and do so as well. Again, links will be left down below, but it's available at gov.liquid.finance. Now, again, let's maybe sort of dive into what's coming next. But in terms of developments, I know you guys have just recently released, and when I say just, it's I think been a couple of months now, released V2, you know, what else is the team currently working on and what can we expect for you guys to push out next in terms of your core focus? So, okay, uh, obviously at least week, uh, Liquid, let's say, um, also just to give you a feedback, you know, when I, my background, I used to build banks and uh, at some point I was so, frustrated of the lack of vision that I decided, okay, one day I should build my own banks. So the goal for me for Liquid is really to be able to bridge DeFi with TradeFi and to really be part of this, I would say, fundamental revolution that will totally change the way we operate with uh, financial products. Um, there, I want also to present, obviously, my vision for it. But what the user can expect is uh, we will reshape our uh, front end. Uh, it's going to be nicer and more efficient. And also we want as part of, we call it uh, internally like liquid V3, but basically it's going to be a rewrite of the smart contracts that are going to be optimized and uh, everything will be faster and smoother. Okay. so. Florian, I want to thank you there. I think that's a really sort of solid introduction. I'd be highly surprised that people watching this particular interview have not heard of you guys before. But now that we've got the fluff out of the way, let's dive into what comes next, right? So as you're probably well aware, big institutions are now jumping into Bitcoin. And I think that some of that attraction and some of that liquidity will inevitably flow into assets like Cardano. If I'm not mistaken, you've got a particular presentation that you're going to be sharing here, which will be diving into sort of how you guys plan to take advantage advantage of that new liquidity and the new attention that'll be coming here as a part of the bull run. So without any further ado, I'm going to go ahead and bring up your slides here. And at this point, I'm going to mute myself and let you handle the rest. Thank you. So um, I want to introduce the concept of institutional DeFi. So as some of you may know, the current TradeFi uh, system is based on really old technology. Obviously, sometimes I would say qualify that as obsolete. It's really centralized. And they have failed to really bank all these unbanked people, which are today more than 1 billion of people. On the other hand, you have this beautiful technology, the blockchain, with a lot of promises, a lot of features. And the more I observe recently what has happened in the world, um, I can't say today that the, the, the genie is out of the bottle, the train has left the station. So all the biggest, let's say, 
key opinion leader of the traditional world now are acknowledging blockchain as uh, the upcoming you know big tech that, that will happen but the main question is how from this point in time today uh, how can we implement this at, at large scale and this is where institutional defi come in place and for me it's the the merge let's say of the traditional finance with the defi because all these established players they have a lot of knowledge but they don't have all the IT know-how or the platform uh, that already are existing. So institutional DeFi is a bit the, the marriage, the combination of this established ecosystem that can you know, provide uh, compliance, that can provide um, adherence to many different law and the know-how of, of a DeFi players. And how I see it is obviously, uh, this is also what Liquid is trying to, to do with, for example, with the gold, with Apex, is to, to work on proof of concept, to work on the, on project where we can leverage the best of both ecosystem. And for me, institutional DeFi is using all this blockchain technology with a layer of compliance and also some um, compliance uh, uh, and processes about custody of assets and tokenization. And together, you can create um, this institutional DeFi that offer instant collateral mobility, 24 seven availability, obviously low cost, instant settlement and equitable access. And where I, I see the role of Cardano in all of that is that for me, it's, I would say I'm convinced that the more institutional investors are learning about blockchain, they will understand why uh, a financial system must be decentralized. And I foresee that liquidity will converge to public blockchain over time. So for me, the, the, let's say the purpose of Cardano is to become this um, institutional DeFi layer one, which is decentralized, secure, and soon scalable. In this vision, uh, I will also present where liquid uh, has its uh, a role to play. We know that traditional finance, it's a, it's a very broad world with a lot of assets, but as uh, you know, the World Economic Forum mentioned, everything will be tokenized in five to 10 years. So it means that all of these assets at some point will come on the blockchain. And for us, it's obviously to onboard as much as possible in our lending platform that we called Liquid Pro. Because if you think from a, let's say, operating point of view, if the token is um, ADA, LQ, or gold, or Tesla share, which is tokenized, or uh, real estate, it's the same thing. It's a token which has a value uh, from and where we need to obviously compute some interest. So this Liquid Pro version will be um, working for regulated assets because regulation comes from the type of assets. And there we would add a kind of filtering, a layer of compliance where we need to identify who is accessing to our platform, who can also based on that access to which market and also trade to, to which uh, counterparties. And basically this is our vision for, for Liquid Pro and we will work on that during uh, the year 2025. And over time, obviously, um, yeah, we want to list as much as asset as we can. And uh, I look forward to, to being there. Florian, I got to give you guys kudos. Um, I typically don't have people that come on here to interview that are as prepped as you were, especially with a presentation as detailed and as nuanced as this. And so for me, I think you guys are spot on. You guys have done a really good job of catering to the sort of retail community, a lot of the diehard Cardano fans, right? But this is only the beginning. We're still super early, and I don't think that we've even seen the full potential of what's about to happen. Um, I was just looking through some of the content earlier um, this morning, catching up on news, and I want to say it is, it might be Schwab or TD Ameritrade, but basically a big financial institution is now beginning to think about how they can take their trading platform and actually have it run using a ledger or a blockchain. So for me, that's sort of like the very first inkling that TradFi realizes 
that this technology isn't going away. So the faster that we can have platforms and projects like Liquid, who are already developed, deployed, and have already done a lot of the heavy lifting, right? Pull those people in and let them know, hey, you don't have to rebuild the wheel. You can actually trade and do all these things and be regulatory compliant by using Liquid Pro, I think sets you guys up for a really, really big piece of the market share here as DeFi actually picks back up in Cardano. So just wanted to say that I think there's a lot of opportunity here. One thing that I know people will definitely be asking me is timing, right? So when can we expect for something as big as Liquid Pro to come online? So um, Liquid Pro, it will take, I would say, you know, it's really hard in IT development to give you an exact timeline. But for us, we plan, let's say, realistically 12 months. So um, because obviously it's not just that. There will be also other features that are built in and uh, also, um, yeah, the, the code needs to be optimized and needs, because obviously we have learned a lot, you know, uh, around these last years and we want to improve a few things. So all together, let's say uh, 12 months um, regarding the, yeah, I would say, you know, uh, because I have a lot of projects, I have a lot of ideas. Uh, for me, you know, I always look at that step by step. Um, in my head, you know, sometimes, as you said, uh, we have already, you know, uh, made so much things that sometimes I even myself cannot realize that we have been so far that we have almost uh, today having 150 millions tomorrow i don't know how much we will have basically cardano and also liquid are evolving together um i know for example that very soon there will be bitcoin os there will be also midgard there will be other teams that are building and and liquid also will uh, seek the you know, win-win solution with everyone and also integrating with all these other uh, big players that are also cooking, let's say. And um, yes, that's, I can tell you the last two years were a really hard bear market for a lot of people. But now uh, I really have no more doubt in my mind that Cardano will be a leading blockchain and that also Liquid uh, will be part of it. Yeah, I think the, the the tough times are behind us. So if you've made it this far, I think that uh, moving forward, you're going to find your time here in the ecosystem much easier, especially now that you guys have been on the main net for so long. Um, yeah. Again, I wanted to thank you for the timeline there. And it's not to say that, you know, that's the end all be all. I think it's just really good for at least from the viewer's perspective to sort of understand, right? Is this something that's coming next week, next month, next year, et cetera? But we definitely understand that as a builder, right? There's a lot of unforeseen circumstances and challenges that may pop up and maybe even tools, right? That make it easier to bring yeah. Liquid Pro to the markets faster. So um, it's not by any means, you know, a definitive timeline, but definitely something that I wanted to post to give the viewers a little bit of an idea as to what they can expect. Now, Florian, We've talked about liquid utility and financial, excuse me, um, institutional adoption. One thing that we haven't discussed, though, is stable coins. And so a lot of lending and borrowing hinges on adoption of stable coin assets. If I'm not mistaken, liquid sort of aiming to be the stable coin platform here in Cardano. So for anybody who maybe has stable coins or is thinking about minting stable coin assets, What's Liquid doing to make sure that yields are attractive and that people actually want to go ahead and put their assets into the markets there? So um, thank you, Farid. So yeah, Liquid, we call ourselves, or one of our, let's say, strategic goal is to, to be, or to, uh, I think we already are the, the home of stablecoin on Cardano. Um, to do that, obviously we have a good technology and also we have very attractive interest rates. Um, I, I'm not aware of the latest rate, but for let's say JED, USDM, you have as a supplier, I think around 20% uh, return. So it's a lot. Uh, I really look forward also to onboard uh, USDA. I know they are coming really soon and uh, Liquid has been uh, has spoken with them. So, uh, you know, many projects are contacting us and so to keep us in the loop. Um, so, and also something that is important to say, Liquid is also talking sometimes with, with market makers, with, um, with people from the, the traditional finance, because what we would like to see is a big player providing liquidity uh, on Liquid. So that's why also a regulated stablecoin is for them uh, uh, very interesting because uh, there is obviously less risk. And the more they learn about Cardano, the more they learn about Liquid, 
the less they are feeling, okay, I take a lot of risk by supplying assets on this platform. So this is also something we are doing. Obviously, we are not alone. Um, but um, I think step by step, uh, the, the, let's say the total liquidity for stablecoin on Cardano will increase. I tend to agree with you there. Um, I think it's inevitable. We are getting a lot of new options. We already have quite a bit here, as you've mentioned. We've got Jed, um, we've got USDC coming in from one chain, IUSD, USDM, um, USDT coming from one chain, and then um, Dai also coming from one chain there as well. Now, Florian, what I would like to do is maybe just offer you an opportunity just to give us some closing thoughts as it pertains to Liquid. And then I do wanna just sort of talk a little bit, generally speaking, right, about what you see um, happening in the DeFi space and sort of the evolution of DeFi, right? I think we take a look at blockchains, you know, last bull market, Cardano only having, you know, Mint Swap, Sunday Swap, very, very uh, limited applications and use cases. We've now seen the platform or the launch of platforms like Liquid. You guys are now talking about Liquid Pro, you know, Liquid V3. So I want to dive into sort of like where you see DeFi going. But before we do that, if we could maybe just get sort of like any last thoughts or key takeaways that you want to mention as it pertains to liquid particularly. Um, I would say that <clears throat> something that people are not seeing when they use liquid is all the infrastructures uh, that we have built. Um, for us, you know, obviously the more the TVL increase, the more also we focus on bringing, let's say, more security for, for, for our infrastructures. Uh, something that is really important for us is uh, the Oracle price. Uh, I would say this is like the Achill Hill of a, of a lending protocol because uh, AMM DEX, they are building themselves the price. And for a lending protocol, we need to take external source of price. So for Liquid, um, we are also in the process of building our own, let's say, price aggregator. Uh, to to calculate this price, we have also implemented a lot of control on them uh, to you know improve our our security. So I would say um, Liquid have, have, have made a, a lot of work in the back end, also to be let's say more smooth, to be more scalable. Because you know 150 million for us is is let's say just the start. I don't know <laughs> where in the, what is the next milestone, but for sure, we are ready to to grow. Yeah, I can tell you what that next milestone is. It starts with the big letter B, right? A billion. Yeah. So excited for what you guys are building here again, just taking a look at the TVL and just seeing how quickly um, and how sharply that has risen, um, really a testament to what you guys have built and the trust you guys have gained here from the community. All right, now that we've got that out of the way, I'm really interested to hear about this piece here because again, you live and breathe DeFi. Where do you see right, this current ecosystem or this sort of niche within blockchain and crypto going over the course of the next coming years? I think when we talk about DeFi, there will be two types of DeFi. Let's say the DeFi for, for retail, which is for unregulated assets, and DeFi for regulated assets. As I have explained before, the traditional finance system has a lot of weaknesses and uh, people understand that and you know everywhere they are looking for solution um, you know when i quote that some article of forbes or, or, or bloomberg or what economic forum they are really looking actively but what i see they are still trapped in their own mindset uh, usually it's still led you know by i would say 50 years old plus people that are not born with internet so for them, it's really hard to understand digitalization and also to be able to shape a vision for what is the future of, of banking. So I really believe that at some point they will contact or try to, to merge or integrate it with this DeFi protocol to build institutional DeFi. So this is where I'm the most exciting because, you know, this is my background. I used to, to build banks and um, at some point I decided, okay, I think I can do it. and. Uh, and I'm here. So for me, I can finally implement all my ideas, all my vision. It took me four years to be there. And uh, that's what uh, excites me the most. I, I believe that you're still at a very, very early stage. Again, I think there's a lot of potential in what you guys have already built and what's going to be coming in terms of needs 
from those institutional players here. Um, so that said, Florian, unless there's anything else that you would like to discuss, uh, go ahead. I'd like to give you an yeah, opportunity. Another other thing that is really important is <clears throat> if you look at this blockchain world and you want to create a financial system, basically there is a few building blocks. You need to have a wallet, you need to have a deed, you need to have someone performing some compliance task, you need to have some liquidity, you need to have a DEX, a place of exchange, and uh, lending. Once you have these things combined together, you can replicate any product uh, on the blockchain. Another thing that I, I'm doing, uh, you know, I'm also talking with a lot of different founders, a lot of different projects in order to build, or let's say to combine all these building blocks. Uh, because, you know, a lot, there is a lot of good founders everywhere on Cardano, but sometimes uh, the ecosystem is really fragmented. And what also I try to do is to, you know, uh, connect people with each other, try to work, try to find these synergies because only together as an ecosystem, we can build this um, new financial system on the blockchain. Yeah, I think that's one thing that we've really needed here in the Cardano ecosystem is one tool or one app that has everything sort of integrated together. So as you mentioned, a wallet, the ability to swap, the ability to lend and borrow and do all these things without necessarily having to jump from product to product because there's no continuity in the space. You know, we have a lot of teams that are just building a wallet, teams that are just building a DeFi platform, teams that are just building a, a swapping platform. But if we can get somebody that can do all of that and make that seem seamless, I think there's going to be a lot of value in that. And um, for a user, it's also going to make their lives so much easier because they don't have to worry about trying to figure out what's the best wallet, what's the best landing platform, what's the best DEX, blah, 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 blah. So those are, I think, some really, really interesting points. And I'm not sure if that was sort of like a tease or you alluding that, you know, the LQ team would be looking to build something like that. Um, but definitely, I think, a really good point that you've made there. Yeah, so um, yeah, I'm all involved in also different projects. You know, I, uh, I advise a lot of people. Uh, a lot of people, you know, ask my opinion on a few things. So yes, I'm involved many different projects and um, i can tell you that you know the, the amount of let's say of growth that i that i have witnessed from from, from my side is, is really big uh, you know the, what i also want to say is these two years were really brutal so a lot of i think the the companies that stayed they are the, the best because obviously from one hand you needed this kind of big cleaning up because yeah there were a lot of bad products uh, i'm speaking in general and the one that have survived these last two years are really the best and really the future is looking really bright for for cardano yeah it's really amazing how uh nature self-healing right because we have a very similar process with wildfires where people might see you know a wildfire happening and a force gets burned down and initially you know you're like, man, what's going on? And I feel like that's the bear market. Mm -hmm. Wildfire, a lot of projects getting burnt down. But what happens after the fact is you actually begin to see seedlings grow, right? Then there's availability for, for new life to come about. And I think that Liquid has taken advantage of that, right? You guys have made it through that, that wildfire and you guys have literally sprung from the ashes and are now the leading DeFi platform here within Cardano. So as we get ready to close out here, Florian, for anybody who wants to join the LQ community, how can they do that? Do you guys have a Discord, Telegram? You know, How can they get in touch with you or just get so, involved with governance? Yes, so yes, we have a, a Discord. We will also add the link in the description. We have uh, our on-chain governance, which is on our app. And before we vote on-chain, we have a kind of off-chain discussion, which is based on the governance forum that uh, you uh, showed before. And um, I would say Discord is the best place to start. Uh, get engaged with the community. It's one of the oldest on Cardano with a lot of knowledgeable uh, DeFi people. And uh, yeah, we are welcoming everyone. Perfect. Awesome interview and uh, awesome introduction to Florian, the co-founder here of the Liquid platform here, building on Cardano. Again, if you guys have any questions about the platform, how to access it, links 
to everything that we've discussed will be left down below. This is, I believe, just the first of many interviews that I plan to have here with the LQT moving forward. I just want to give a quick shout out to um, RNG Crypto as well, who's a viewer here, who's actually the one that pushed us, right, to actually make this happen. So RNG, I want to thank you for that. Definitely do appreciate it. Of course, Florian, thank you for your time here as well. Ladies and gentlemen, that'll do it here for today's interview, breaking down everything going on in Cardano. If you found any portion of today's call to be helpful or informational, please make sure to smash that thumbs up if it's your first time stopping by dap central and you want more content like this breaking down all of the biggest builders here within cardano consider subscribing to the channel and last but not least if you have any questions as it pertains to liquid their markets or even um, some of the teasers that florence provided here as it pertains to institutional adoption or liquid pro please leave a comment down below i'll make sure to get those over to the team or alternatively join their discord and you can actually speak to the team members yourselves that said that will do it here for today's video wishing you all a wonderful rest of your day take care for now everybody see you later Bye 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 bye